Greetings, citizens from the rolling hills of the bluegrass. For any of you who are big Dan Carlin fans and may be new to his series, one that's so pertinent to the goings on now is his series called Death Throes of the Republic. And I am absolutely fascinated with pre-imperial Rome. It's, it's to me, you hate to try to say that, again, history repeats itself or history rhymes, but there is just so much happening right now in the last two days, which is August the 22nd and the 23rd of 2020, this great tumultuous year that we're all living through and there the, there are just so many parallels that it <laughs> that it, it 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 breaks the mind but if if you give Dan Carlin the time and go listen to that podcast Death Throes of the Republic and then start looking at now through those lenses it's not a beat for beat, but we're at least on the offbeat of the same piece of music. It is, it is so crazy. In walks Cornelius Sulla. In walks Donald Trump, and he takes a bat to everything, trying to maybe put the pieces together that were separate. Now, the thing that Sulla has that, thank God, Trump doesn't have is the ability to just randomly kill people. But Sulla was attempting to reorder the Republic back to the way that it was. And it wasn't perfect. Let's be very honest. You know, the Roman Republic was very oligarchical. It was very stratified by class. So it wasn't perfect in any way, but for the people of its time, it was something different. Just like America, for the people of its time, it was something different. And in walks Sulla Trump, or Sulla Trumpius, and the reactionaries of both stripes start coming out of the woodwork. Because unfortunately, humans are a little bit like sharks, a little bit like wolves. Blood's in the air, blood's in the water. It's weak. America is weak. And they can sense it. And this may be a chance to seize a little bit of power to get the foot in the door. And that's exactly where we are right now. Because after the death of Crassus, you see these gangs forming. And one gang formed for Pompey, and one gang formed um, for Caesar. And it's very, it's, it's almost just mind-blowing because the person who supported Pompey was named Milo. And there for a little bit, we had Milo the Unopolis on the side of Trump, who would technically be the Pompey in the time that's going on. And on the side of who's going, the person who's going to play Caesar, it's less the person than it is the entirety of the Democratic Party. But you have uh, Publius Clo Clodius Pulcher, who is leading the other gang. So we have the basic beginnings of the citizen militia, the bottom rung is rising up. The common people, it's not being played out at the state level. 
at the ruling class level. This is starting out at the base. And this is where those ground swells start to gain power. They gain speed and start moving and rushing forward and gaining height and becoming higher and higher to the point where state officials will not be able to control them without immense repression at the hands of the military. And you already have people on the left talking about how the military might have to remove Trump Oh, it, it, it gives you, it just gives you butterflies in the stomach thinking about all of this and where this could go. Because it comes a little closer than ancient Rome in the scheme of time. Because this is what happened in Weimar, Germany, too. You had small groups the early fascists, the communists that had been trying to gain power, and they're fighting with one another. And this is where Antifa comes from. It comes from this time period. It comes from Italy before it, where you had those trying to fight back against Mussolini. And Hitler gets all the credit for fascism, but it's Italy. We always forget Italy because Mussolini is kind of this little kind of a caricature, kind of a cartoon, but he was New York Times Man of the Year, I think at least twice. Can't really remember the number, but you're talking about someone who world leaders, who people in this country agreed with. And you have these little gangs. You had, what, the black shirts in Italy, roaming around, beating people. And then you come forward in time a little bit and you have Germany. And you have the anti-fascista movement going up against the SA, the brown shirts. And that's where those morons in Charlottesville made themselves look like SA agents. And they just gave fuel to the fire. Antifa was already bubbling up. But then those morons in Charlotte marched. And that girl died. Heather Heyer died. And it just gave them, gave them reasons. Give them reasons. You do not give your enemy ammunition. You do not hand your enemy weapons. But that's exactly what's been happening for the last four years. drip by drip and it finally needed a catalyst and, and you have to think about the speed at which this occurred George Floyd dies and boom we're into this and that's all it took a matter of weeks maybe even if you could actually timeline it it was days And that's one of the things that the ancients don't have on us is the speed at which we can make things occur is lightning fast now. They would have had to have had weeks and months of this kind of thing going on in Rome, in Weimar, even though Weimar was a modern situation and you just you, you just marvel at our speed at which things can occur because it's now able to happen so fast that we almost have to be reactionary that we almost have to jump from our seats, get in the car, and drive to where it's happening right now. And if someone does not pull these two groups apart, it's going to get ugly quick. 
it is going to get so ugly so fast. And Twitter and Facebook and all of these social media um, mechanisms are going to make it occur at an exponential level because you can go, we're at 35th and five, 35th and Main. We need people here now. And boom, people are already moving. And that's exactly what's going to happen. It is going to happen so fast because the left operates under something that I call the loud mouth principle or the loud mouth motive. And what it is, is it's the person walking towards you and they're spitting trash and they're just talking a whole bunch of nothing. But they're talking the entire time they come up to you and they're pushing their buttons and then they get right in your face and they say something and then they accidentally touch you just a little bit and you haul off and hit them. And then they can go, you're a monster. Look how violent you are, even though the entire time they're walking up and instigating you. Now, that's free speech. That's free speech and that should be defended. But it's also where free speech gets a little muddy. And this is where the non-free speech or the what is it, the non-absolutists kind of have us over a barrel a little bit. Because that instigation is what precipitated the punch. Even if that little tap occurred, if they had just tapped you, you might have just pushed them back and said, hey, watch it. But they talked the entire time they were coming up to you. And then that touch or that brush or that accidental contact and boom, the reaction is the fist to the face. And then as they're walking away, they're talking again. You're a monster. You're a villain. You're evil. Did you see what they did to me? Look what they did to me. And you've just handed your enemy ammunition. You've given them everything they wanted because you couldn't control yourself and that snowballs that tsunamis to even greater forms of violence right it's the, it's the old bugs bunny cartoon where the music starts playing and Yosemite Sam runs in with a knife and he chases Bugs Bunny off screen. Bugs Bunny runs Yosemite Sam back in from that side and he's carrying a gun. And then Yosemite Sam runs out and he's got a rifle. And then, and then it goes on and on and on until at the very end Bugs Bunny comes in and chases um, Yosemite Sam with a battleship. It's the arms race. It starts with the ideological arms race and then the physical weaponized arms race. And we are so close. We are so close. And if Donald Trump wins, we are in trouble. And if he loses, we are in trouble. And it's, it, it just makes me so nervous, so unsettled, because there are children in my life that are going to have to live through this and are going to grow up seeing that we have devolved into this. And unfortunately, in this capacity, I don't know if Donald Trump has the ability to control it. So those of you who put faith in him, I want you to realize that he is probably not very brave, but he doesn't have a governor on his rhetoric. And he can push people to the edge so fast that we are not going to be able to stop them. Thank you.